at work at the same place she was on September 11th, 10 years ago. That will be a bit unnerving. It will, uh, I'm sure, raise the, the hairs on my arm. Danielle was in the Dulles Airport Control Tower that day outside Washington. One of the FAA air traffic controllers 10 years ago who saw and heard the hijack horror unfold. The nightmares have faded. They truly have. At 8.25 that morning, she handled the routine on-time departure of American Flight 77, a Boeing 757 like this one, with 59 people and five hijackers on board. When we talked with her back then, Danielle recalled it as just a normal radio transmission. American 77 Dulles approach, climb and maintain 17,000. And then I asked American 77 to contact the next controller. American 77, contact Washington Center, 120.65. Good luck. 20 minutes later, as the hijacked planes began their deadly, coordinated missions, it was air traffic controllers around the country who were the first to realize it, starting with a strange transmission from American Flight 11 out of Boston, the voice of hijacker Mohammed Atta. We have some planes. Stay quiet and you'll be okay. American Flight 11 hit the North Tower of the World Trade Center seconds later. As controllers realized another flight out of Boston was also hijacked. I guess it dropped 800 feet in like, a, like one, one sweep. That's, that's another situation. It was United Flight 175 hitting the South Tower. Another one just hit the building. Wow. The whole building just uh, came apart. Then the drama shifted to Washington as the flight Danielle had handled. American 77 disappeared from radar and then headed back into the capital. Okay, he's 12 miles west. He's moving very fast eastbound. Okay, guys, where is he now? 11 miles west. And it was just a countdown. The White House was told to evacuate. You guys, please, all the way to A Street, please. And it went six, five, four. And I had it in my mouth to say three. And all of a sudden, the plane turned away. This must be one of our guys sent in, scrambled to patrol our capital and to protect our president. And we sat back in our chairs and breathed for just a second. And the plane turned back. He continued the right hand turn, made a 360 degree maneuver. A big loop? Correct. And we're telling the supervisor he's turning back in. He's turning back eastbound. The controller next to Danielle was Tom Howell. And the turn kept going. And that's when I think I yelled to John. I said, oh my God, John, he's coming back. And we waited. And we waited. And your heart's just beating out of your chest. American 77 then hit its target, the Pentagon. It looks like that aircraft crashed into the Pentagon, sir. Badly shaken, Danielle left her job as an air traffic controller, taking a few years off. Just to kind of get my thoughts back together, to get myself back on an even keel, to be sure that I was ready for duty. Now she says she is ready for duty. Danielle married the air traffic controller who sat next to her that awful day, Tom Howell. Having the bond of 9-11 is just an unspoken bond between us. And together they have a daughter, Tiffany, now three years old, and a symbol for Danielle, of all they and the country have been through. Tiffany is a glimmer of hope, so I hope that our nation also finds themselves feeling that way, that there is hope, that there is positive yet to be had in the world, and yes, we do need to remember because we learn from the past. For Nightline, I'm Brian Ross, ABC News.